helping those who need help. As God's agencies, we are to have hearts of flesh, full of the charity that prompts us to be helpful to those more needy than ourselves. If we see our brethren and sisters struggling under poverty and debt, if we see churches that are in need of financial aid, we should manifest an unselfish interest in them and help them in proportion as God has prospered us. If you who have charge of an institution see other institutions bravely struggling for standing room so that they may do a work similar to the work of the institutions with which you are connected, do not be jealous. Do not seek to push a working force out of existence and to exalt yourself in conscious superiority. Rather, curtail some of your large plans and help those who are struggling. Aid them in carrying out some of their plans to increase their facilities. Do not use every dollar in enlarging your facilities and increasing your responsibilities. Reserve part of your means for establishing in other places health institutions and schools. You will need great wisdom to know just where to place these institutions so that the people will be the most benefited. All these matters must receive candid consideration. Those in positions of responsibility will need wisdom from on high in order to deal justly, to love mercy, and to show mercy, not only to a few, but to everyone with whom they come in contact. Christ identifies his interests with those of his people. No matter how poor or needy they may be, missions must be opened for the colored people, and everyone should seek to do something and to do it now. There is need that institutions be established in different places, that men and women may be set at work to do their best in the fear of God. No one should lose sight of his mission and work. Everyone should aim to carry forward to a successful issue the work placed in his hands. All our institutions should keep this in mind and strive for success. But at the same time, let them remember that their success will increase in proportion as they exercise disinterested liberality, sharing their abundance with institutions that are struggling for a foothold. Our prosperous institutions should help those institutions that God has said should live and prosper, but which are still struggling for an existence. There is among us a very limited amount of real, unselfish love. The Lord says, Everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. 1 John 4, 7, 8, and 12. It is not pleasing to God to see man looking only upon his own things, closing his eyes to the interests of others. What one institution can do for another. In the providence of God, the Battle Creek Sanitarium has been greatly prospered, and during this coming year, those in charge should restrict their wants. Instead of doing all that they desire to do in enlarging their facilities, they should do unselfish work for God, reaching out the hand of charity to interests centered in other places. What benefit they could confer upon the rural health retreat at St. Helena by giving a few thousand dollars to this enterprise such a donation would give courage to those in charge, inspiring them to move forward and upward. Donations were made to the Battle Creek Sanitarium in its earlier history, and should not this sanitarium consider carefully what it can do for its sister institution on the Pacific Coast? My brethren in Battle Creek, does it not seem in accordance with God's order to restrict your wants? to curtail your building operations, not enlarging our institutions in that center? Why should you not feel that it is your privilege and duty to help those who need help? A Reformation Needed I have been instructed that a reformation is needed along these lines. 
that more liberality should prevail among us. There is constant danger that even Seventh-day Adventists will be overcome with selfish ambition and will desire to center all the means and power in the interests over which they especially preside. There is danger that men will permit a jealous feeling to arise in their hearts and that they will become envious of interests that are as important as those which they are handling. Those who cherish the grace of pure Christianity cannot look with indifference upon any part of the work in the Lord's great vineyard. Those who are truly converted will have an equal interest in the work in all parts of the vineyard and will be ready to help wherever help is needed. It is selfishness that hinders men from sending help to those places where the work of God is not as prosperous as it is in the institution over which they have supervision. Those who bear responsibilities should carefully seek for the good of every branch of the cause and work of God. They should encourage and sustain the interests in other fields as well as the interests in their own. Thus, the bonds of brotherhood would be strengthened between members of God's family on earth and the door would be closed to the petty jealousies and heart burnings that position and prosperity are sure to arouse unless the grace of God controls the heart. This I say, Paul wrote, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Let every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God, whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution among them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. 2 Corinthians 9 6 to 8 and 11 to 15. The Question of Wages The institution is now in a prosperous condition, and its managers should not insist upon the low rate of wages that was necessary in its earlier years. Worthy, efficient workers should receive reasonable wages for their labor, and they should be left to exercise their own judgment as to the use they make of their wages. In no case should they be overworked. The physician-in-chief himself should have larger wages. To the physician-in-chief, I wish to say, although you have not the matter of wages under your personal supervision, it is best for you to look carefully into this matter, for you are responsible as the head of the institution. Do not call upon the workers to do so much of the sacrificing Restrict your ambition to enlarge the institution and to accumulate responsibilities. Let some of the means flowing into the sanitarium be given to the institutions needing help. This is certainly right. It is in accordance with God's will and way, and it will bring the blessing of God upon the sanitarium. I wish to say particularly to the board of directors, Remember that the workers should be paid according to their faithfulness. God requires us to deal with one another in the strictest faithfulness. Some of you are overburdened with cares and responsibilities, and I have been instructed that there is danger of your becoming selfish and wronging those whom you employ. Each business transaction, whether it has to do with a worker occupying a position of responsibility or with the lowliest worker connected with a sanitarium, should be such as God can approve. Walk in the light while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. 
It would be far better to expend less in building and give your workers wages that are in accordance with the value of their work, exercising toward them mercy and justice. From the light that the Lord has been pleased to give me, I know that he is not pleased with many things which have taken place in reference to the workers. God has not laid every particular open to me, but warnings have come that in many things decided reformation is needed. I have been shown that there is need of fathers and mothers in Israel being united with the institution. Devoted men and women should be employed who, because they are not continually pressed with cares and responsibilities, can look after the spiritual interests of the employees. It is necessary that such men and women should be constantly at work in missionary lines in this large institution. Not half is being done that should be done in this respect. It should be the part of these men and women to labor for the employees in spiritual lines, giving them instruction that will teach them how to win souls, showing them that this is to be done not by much talking, but by a consistent Christ-like life. The workers are exposed to worldly influences, but instead of being molded by these influences, they should be consecrated missionaries, controlled by an influence that elevates and refines. Thus, they will learn how to meet unbelievers and how to exert an influence that will win them to Christ. Channels of Blessing Written at Kurenbong, New South Wales, August 28, 1895 God has a work for every believer who labors in the sanitarium. Every nurse is to be a channel of blessing, receiving light from above and letting it shine forth to others. The workers are not to conform to fashionable display of those who come to the sanitarium for treatment, but are to consecrate themselves to God. The atmosphere that surrounds their souls is to be a savor of life unto life. Temptations will beset them on every side, but let them ask God for his presence and guidance. The Lord said to Moses, Certainly I will be with thee. And to every faithful, consecrated worker, the same assurance is given.